This is a self-generating sound called self-generating random gate. It sounds like this. Once you've connected the cables, as you can see on the diagram, press a key once and the patch will play itself indefinitely. The function 1 gate input is triggered continuously by the function 2 positive output. Function 2 is creating a continuous wave because the function 2 end trigger is connected to the function 2 trigger input. The function 2 time is being randomised for each cycle of the function 1 attack hold release signal because the function 1 end trigger is connected to the woggle trigger input and the woggle stepped output is connected to the function 2 time input. This causes a gate signal of random length or time to be sent to the function 1 gate input. This is random within a range set by the time knob. To make the sound more interesting, the function 2 inverted output is sent to the source fold input, which causes the fold amount to rise and fall with each note. You can change the pitch by playing the keyboard. This is a nice easy patch I call Brass Bugle. It uses the function 1 wave to increase the ratio during the attack section of the sound. So as the attack ramps up, the ratio amount ramps up. This one is best used played live or with the long gate setting on. Slow, fast, slow. This uses the inverted output of function 1 to change the rate of function 2 as a note is played and held and released and function 2 is being used to change the amount of fold in the sound. So that changes over the course of the attack and the hold and the release phase. Bounce back. This is another easy one. When a key is released, the function 1 end trigger sends a high level signal to the fold amount, which causes the fold level to jump up as you release a key. You can play this live on the keyboard, or if you're going to play it using the sequencer, it's best to have the long gate setting turned on. This is the function 2 LFO patch, which I find is the basis for more patches than any other that I use. In its basic form it can sound like this. What's happening here is that function 2 is being made to generate a continuous wave by connecting the 
function to trigger input to the function to end trigger output. So when function to has completed one cycle of a wave, it sends a brief trigger signal to the trigger input, which causes it to generate another wave, and then so on. So it ends up generating a continuous wave. We can change the shape and the frequency of this wave using the shape and the time controls. And then we can use the output of this wave to change other parameters. So here I'm using the positive output to control the amount of fold. We could also use the negative output at the same time if we wanted to, to change another parameter. So as this wave is moving up and down, we can change it with the time and the shape controls also, which I will show you now. And just bear this one in mind because this is a very important way to create a type of LFO that on many synthesizers would be a dedicated section called LFO. So there's no LFO here, but you can use this in the same way. This sound uses a combination of the carrier wave and the modulator wave. The modulator wave provides the very deep bass and the carrier wave provides the wub sound. The modulator wave is patched to LPG2 to make it audible and it has the volume envelope from function 1 which is patched to the LPG2 level input. The LPG2 cutoff knob is turned up also to make this audible. We could isolate just that part of the sound by turning down the level of the LPG1 cutoff. So this is just the modulator part of the sound. Then when we bring up the volume of LPG1 cutoff, we start to hear the carrier wave. The carrier wave is creating a kind of wub sound because we're using the sequences gate output to trigger function two to create a rise and a fall signal for every note, which is then causing the amount of fold to rise and fall. So as every note is played, the fold amount is increased. Wow. Wow. So it's increased and then decreased. And you can change the kind of the shape and the, the length of that wub by changing the function to time and shape controls. Release Shapeshifter This uses function 1 to change the shape of the function 2 wave. So what happens is as the function 1 wave rises and falls, the shape of the function 2 wave changes. 
function two is set up like an LFO looped and the output, the positive output of function two is sent to the fold input. So function one is controlling function two, which is controlling the fold of the carrier wave. Alien visit. This is similar to the previous patch, but here function one is controlling the time parameter of function two, and function two is controlling the pitch of the carrier wave. So as we play and release a note, the rate of change of the pitch of the carrier wave changes from faster to slower. Metallic bounce. This is very similar in theory to the alien visit patch that we just heard. But here, function two is controlling the volume level of the carrier wave rather than the pitch. This patch will continue to play until you unplug the connection from the LPG1 level input or until you press the keyboard again when you will re-trigger function 1 and the bounce will start again. Computer processing. This is reminiscent of the kind of sound effect you might hear in a sci-fi film for a big computer. <laughs> This sound duplicates the end trigger output of function 2 three times using the split module. Once to re-trigger function 2 to create an LFO, twice to re-trigger a new woggle value which is used to create a random pitch for each blip and a third time to create a volume envelope for each blip using function one. The sound plays automatically when you make that connection to the function one gate input and you can change the length and the speed of each blip using the function two shape and time knobs. Thank <laughs> you.